Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. You'll be watching this in early November and the RTR, the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, is coming up in January, January 11th through the 21st, 2018. And so uh, I'm hearing from a lot of you in emails and on the forum uh, and through the comments on the website and the blog and the channel that you are headed towards the RTR right now and you want to know where to go and that seems like a good thing wherever you are now is probably cold or could be cold and you're wanting to go to where it's somewhere warm like the Arizona desert and wait for the rubber tramp rendezvous makes perfect sense so a lot of you are writing me and asking me questions and today's video I want to answer those questions I want to tell you all you need to know for right now about getting to setting up camp at the RTR I'm going to answer four questions. One, I'm coming early, where do I go? Uh, where do I go on Quartzsite? Where can I meet you? And that's the second question. Where can I meet up with the tribe? And that leads automatically to the third question. How do I meet people when I get there to the tribe? How do I make connections? And really what that means, and a, and a fourth question uh, that I get just all the time, year-round, is what is camp etiquette? Um, and I wondered for a while about why I get all these questions, what's camp etiquette? I understand where do I go, but the, the, the meeting people and, and uh, how do I camp and how do I get along, that has always kind of puzzled me until I realized that it's kind of human nature. That whenever we're doing something new and really quite strange, I mean let's face it, driving into the middle of the desert you may never have been to the desert before and meeting a bunch of strange people and just walking up saying here I am I mean that seems very odd and unusual for most of it is most of us it is very far out of our comfort zone we really don't know how to to cope with that I mean we've always lived in houses and in communities and apartments and and you know we have a certain way that we know how to deal with that situation and you know it comes back to I think our oldest fear the fear of embarrassment the fear of rejection and it's very tribal that is very primitive elemental uh, fear one of the most basic fears the two most basic fears I believe are the fear of death which we've talked about before we won't talk about again and the fear of being embarrassed the fear of being embarrassed and therefore rejected I believe that is the two of the greatest most powerful fears in our lives and they really both make perfect sense the fear of rejection, of, of, of being embarrassed, is very deeply rooted into our very DNA, into our very genetics. Because for millions of years, as, as humans and prehumans, uh, if we were rejected by the tribe, we were going to die. The single most important thing in our lives to staying alive was to be part of a tribe, a part of a community, to be, be bonded in that they would take care of me and I would take care of them and it was always a two-way street and so that is what human beings do naturally it's who we are it's written into our very DNA and there's also part of us as all of you introverts know <clears throat> that likes to pull away and be separate but even you have that genetic pull to be accepted into a group I mean I'm very much an introvert but I still have that genetic pull to be pulled into and part of a group and to have a few select friends and and for the circle of friends we have varies greatly with each person some have a huge circle of friends and some have just a few but we all want and need some so this this fear of rejection and fear of being embarrassed is a very deeply rooted fear in us we all have it we can't get away from it and so I, I understand how you a lot of you are feeling and I thought back, you know, our whole lives we have gone through this very situation. You know, when we went off to school, we were raised in our homes, and that was a terrifying thing. Come out of the womb, be raised in a family. That was a huge learning curve for every human. And then we go off to school, don't we? We go off to kindergarten. And that's, you know, you get on that school bus, or mom drops you off and pushes you away, and that is one of the most terrifying things that have ever happened to any of us. Or, or first grade. And then... Uh, and so we, we get over that hurdle, some of us better than others. Um, and then we face the next hurdle, which is going into junior high. And that's a whole another thing, isn't it? Of being uh, another social group that's much more difficult. And then on to high school and college and jobs and 
then through our lives. And the further we go, the easier it gets, becomes more and more routine. Well, I've done this before, I can do it again. But this, what we're doing now by coming out to join a tribe in the middle of nowhere, and you're not living in a house, maybe you're living in a tent or a van or a car or an RV. It's so unusual, it's so out of the box. It's so very far out of our comfort zone that for many of you, it's really difficult. And so it's like going to kindergarten again for the very first time or going, mom dropped, putting you on the school bus to go to first grade or dropping you off and she drives away. And for the very first time in your life, you are not surrounded by people who love you. And you go into total strangers. And so for a lot of us, it is very reminiscent of that. It's that ancient terror of being rejected and being embarrassed. And so I understand, and I, I have had that. I've had that all my life. You know, if I were, if I went into a restaurant and I sat alone, I just felt so, you know, everyone's looking at me and mocking me and thinking about, why well, look at that, that loser sitting over there alone. Or if I go to a movie and I'm alone, I've been alone most of my life. And so or if I went to church, that would really be, if I ended up sitting in a pew with no one else on it, I thought, what a loser am I that uh, whatever in your life, that, that fear of being alone, from going anywhere alone, from doing things alone, from eating alone, uh, it, it's super powerful. And so a lot of you want to know, where will I find people and how will I make friends? Will they hate me? That's the basic fear that you're not saying that drives these questions. It keeps, keeps you in your house in a miserable situation. They won't like me. I don't deserve to be liked. And I know that feeling. I have that feeling deep down inside of me. And I can assure you that it's almost never happens that you aren't liked and that you are rejected. Almost never. I mean, out of the thousands and thousands of people I've met on the road, I can't think of, I can't even think of a handful, five, that have been rejected and not accepted in. You'd have to be really an exceptional person not to be accepted into the tribe. So you will be. And, and that's what this video is all about. So where will you find us? I'm going to put up a first question. So I just want to answer these questions one at a time in a fairly logical way. First question, where will I find the tribe? And I'm going to put up a series of maps, and I want you to look at the maps, and that will tell you roughly where we are and where you'll find us, and I'll tell you how to, specifically, how to find individuals in a smaller area. Uh, the first map I'm going to put up is of the Mogollon Rim. Uh, that is where we spend fall, and a lot of our tribe has been up on the Mogollon Rim waiting for the desert to cool down. It's been an unusually hot uh, October. Well, now we are at the very end of October, and it is just now into the 80s on a routine basis in the desert. So people will start leaving the high country, which would be, in this case, the Mogollon Rim, up by Flagstaff over to New Mexico, or even the really high country in Colorado. Uh, or in the Sierras of California, or in Utah, or uh, maybe even all the way up to Wyoming, although it's been cold there for a while. See, that's the problem, is the North Country will all be cold, and you'll start leaving it, and the desert is still too hot, so you find an in-between place. That in-between place has been, uh, in Arizona, uh, heading towards the Arizona desert, has been uh, Sedona and Cottonwood, and probably Prescott. And then some, there's a band of area, there's the Mogollon Rim, and just below it is a band, uh, the Mogollon Rim state is at about six, seven, eight thousand feet, all the way up to nine thousand feet. And you can see on this map that it's green, that means it's a deep forest, that's a huge ponderosa pine forest that usually almost always grow above seven thousand feet. So everything you see that's really dark is above seven thousand feet, normally. There are some, some, some exceptions in there. So people have been up in there and waiting for it to cool off when it started. That started to get cold, which was about a week ago or two, which is normal. Again, very normal. By the middle of August, October, the high country is too cold. You're going down to the middle lands, which would be Sedona Cottonwood. And there's a whole strip around the Mogollon Rim just below it. That's at three to four to 5,000 feet, and you can be comfortable. So they're there now, Mulemer and Sedona and Cottonwood. And now that it's finally dropped off in Quartzsite, Ehrenberg, Yuma, Lake Havasu, uh, Wickenburg, Congress, even over by Phoenix, uh, now that it's cooled off there, people will be headed down into the desert country. And that's where they'll be now. So if you're headed now towards Quartzsite, Yuma, Ehrenberg, Lake Havasu, Slab City, you're going at just the right time. This, here it is, October 31st. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. 
Uh, if you're heading out, uh, you'll, this will be past, it'll be past Halloween when you watch this. Uh, and if you're headed out there now, it's the perfect time because I, wa I looked at the weather forecast and it's into the 80s the rest of the week and I'm sure it will not go up again. It would be very unusual for November to be above the 80s. That, very unusual and I'm not expecting that and I don't, won't be. So now is the time to be headed. If you want to get into Ehrenberg and Quartzsite, now is the time to be going. So now the question is, okay, I'm headed towards Ehrenberg and Quartzsite. The rest of the tribe will start to, to funnel in out of the high country. Cottonwood, Sedona, Paul, uh, Prescott, Flagstaff, they'll be getting too cold. I'm not going to stay up there when it's cold. I'm going down to the desert. And so it'll be start filling up with our people. Now your next question is, where do I camp? Say I'm not going there right now, I don't want to get there and be there this early. Where can I camp? So this next map is Arizona, where you probably will go. Yet again, it shows all, the, in yellow, all the BLM land across Arizona. It is a huge amount of BLM land. Oh, let me say that the, both of these maps are taken from publiclands.org. You can go there and zoom in on these or, or move out. Pick a state and zoom the map in and then zoom back out, however you want to do. You can get very narrow and tight on it. Public lands, plural. That's important. There's a publicland.org, which is not plural, and it sells books. So this map shows Arizona BLM land. It's a really good map. You can see it's just everywhere, and I've been around on a lot of it. It's easy to find... Uh, it's easy to find land with uh, good internet, cell phone, uh, be all alone, and really, sometimes in really pretty locations. Sometimes you're going to be 20 or 30 miles away from the nearest town. That's town or, uh, or Walmart. Uh, it's amazing the amount of places there are in Arizona to camp. Unlimited supply. Don't Anyone that tells you we're running out of land, there won't be any more camping left for me, so I'd better not go, that's just flat wrong. There's plenty of land. It's not going to run out. They couldn't, I mean, it, it's nonsense. There's plenty of land, it's not going to run out. So as you can see, there's plenty of BLM land. You can camp anywhere in it, on all of it, as long as it's a legal road, you are safe. Uh, and the more in the middle of nowhere you are, the safer you're gonna be, literally, as far as your safety as opposed to bad guys. The closer you are to a town of any size, uh, the unsafer you are. So actually, uh, the bigger the town, the less safe you are because the drunks and the and the partiers are going to come out there and party to make mess and be outside the law. And if you're there, maybe they're going to want to mess with you too. It's possible. So the further you are away, they're not going to go that far. They're, they're just, they're lazy people. They're going to go to the nearest place where they can party and do anything they want. And if you happen to be there, <clears throat> you're, you're going to be part of the entertainment for them. Now this third map we're going to look at is Quartzsite and Ehrenberg because that's where the majority of the tribe is headed for. If I were, I'm in Florida now, this is the Ocala National Forest. For those of you who are wondering, this is the Ocala National Forest. Uh, if I were in the West Coast now, not taking care of my mom, I would be going to Ehrenberg. I'd be there now. There would be a lot of people that would come and want to camp around me. There would be 20, 30, 40 people or more camped around me in Ehrenberg. There still will be. Enough people have done it in the past. That's where they're headed for. They're going to Ehrenberg. So this map shows you the location of uh, Ehrenberg right on the Colorado River, the California border. Blythe is beside it where you can get pretty darn good shopping. And then Quartzsite is about 17 miles on the freeway to the east. So they're very close to each other. <clears throat> And the question you might want to ask yourself is, which one should I go to? Quartzsite is prettier, I think. It's more entertaining. There are the vendors there now. The people shopping is there now. Uh, I actually prefer Quartzsite. However, there is also uh, BLM enforcement there. The reason I go to Ehrenberg is to avoid any BLM enforcement. That's especially true if you're going to be at the, at the uh, RTR for two weeks. Because if you're there for two weeks and you've already been there a month, the odds are you're going to get caught and chased away and you will miss part of the RTR. So I make it a personal habit. If I'm going to Aaron Bur to Quartzsite, I'm in Quartzsite for November. And then I leave uh, Quartzsite and go to Ehrenberg for December. And then I don't go back to Quartzsite until just before the RTR. No problems with the 14-day rule in Quartzsite. And then I get to visit in both. I get to spend time in both. So that would be my recommendation to you. Go to Quartzsite, meet all the people, <clears throat> get to know the area, find the campsites, and uh, spend November there. 
uh, you won't probably won't, there won't be any enforcement in November. They start enforcing in December, especially in late December, because they know the mad rush that's coming in January, and they want to clear it out of people who are staying. So by towards the end of December, there will be a push. And there's very likely someone will come into your camp and say, you've been here for a month, you need to go. He will probably write down your rig, he'll remember your face, he will remember your, he will write down your license plate number, and you have a problem now if he comes back at the RTR and sees you and think, hey, you were here all of December, he's gonna take notes, these guys aren't dummies, uh, and when he comes back and sees you at the RTR, he's gonna think, you were here all of December, you can't be here now. You don't want that to happen. That's why I'm never in quartzite in December. November in Quartzsite, December in Ehrenberg, back to Quartzsite in January. Uh, and I think that is what I would recommend to all of you. You can push it. You could get at the LTVA. LTVA is free for the year. You buy the $180 pass, you're there for seven months. No one's going to say a word, no problems whatsoever. Uh, that's the one way to do it. Uh, you could try to move around enough that he won't remember you or see you, but it's risky. It is a risk. Chances are, if you do it right and you have a very nondescript vehicle, uh, he won't remember you. And if you always move around a lot, you stay at this place three days and that stays for three days. And in fact, that leads us to our my next map. Let me put up this map next. These are the four main camping areas around Quartzsite. Uh, to the very north on I-95 is uh, Plamosa. And by, when I say camping areas, these are de designated as camping areas. They will actually have a host. The host will issue you a permit. Let me make this very clear right now. You cannot get the permit before you go there. You get the, ho the permit when you get there from that host for that area. So if you come in and you want to stay at Plamosa at the north, it's probably five, eight miles north of town, 10 miles maybe. I don't know. I've never measured it. <clears throat> and so you go up there, Plamosa, you get a permit, you have your, your, your two-week permit at Plamosa. Uh, or just south of Plamosa is High Jolly, uh, and you'll learn all about these names, High Jolly. High Jolly is actually a famous guy in Quartzsite, and you'll learn that, all of that later. I won't tell you now. Uh, you'll go to High Jolly, and you will, um, you can do the same thing there. There's a host. It's a designated large, really, it's not as large as Plamosa. Plamosa is a huge area, but it still has an end. Or you could go up that road, that's uh, Bouse Road. You could go up and over and be in a whole new ranger district. There won't be permits. There won't be hardly any enforcement. Uh, that's an option too. But that's further away. If you're going to do that, I'd say go to Ehrenberg. <clears throat> um, Bouse has, has zero shopping practically, and Ehrenberg has very good shopping. So, uh, so that's the two, two big areas. And, and if you go down, the, look down uh, the road from High Jolly, there's this town of Quartzsite. To the left of it uh, is Dome Rock Road. We used to have the RTR there. We had the RTR there for three years. There are lots of reasons why that's not what a place I recommend. The wind's worse. It's very rocky, very rough walking. Uh, traffic is much more difficult to get into to and out of town. But there's also a campground host out there and tons and tons of, of, high, of camping. And it's a pretty area. I think it's probably the prettiest area in the Quartzsite area. Uh, and, and a lot of walking and hiking. That's a lot of really good things about Dome Rock. So early on in, in uh, November, uh, I, would, I might think about Dome Rock because traffic's not an issue and there's so much walking. And I really like that area. That's why we had the RTR there for three years. But the traffic made it unpleasant in, in uh, January, and so don't go there in, in December or January because the traffic will get bad on you and it'll be unpleasant. Uh, and to the right of um, Quartzsite, uh, out is Skadden Wash, and that's where the RTR is. It's further out, There's a that's the fourth major area. There is a campground host there. You will get a permit. You cannot get your permit early. When you get there, Find the host, you'll find him, they're easy to find, they're right there, they're plain and obvious, and you'll get your permit then. Don't write me and ask me to get a permit. You, I, I can't, you can't get one. Um, and so you get your permit, and then you're good to go. And you can camp out there. And I like, I like that area, the traffic's the best, the easiest in and out of town. But again, in November, it's not an issue, the traffic's not a problem. Traffic starts becoming a problem 
in December, it gets worse in late December, in January it becomes a nightmare. Traffic in January can be a nightmare and so uh, being on the Scadden Wash side of town is far easier. So that's where you can go and camp. Okay, so I think we've covered where to go. You can go out to Ehrenberg, you can camp anywhere on Beelium land in California, uh, in, in Arizona. There's all tons and tons of places, whatever you want. Okay, so that's where to go. My, your next question is, how do I find the tribe? Okay, I, I don't want to just go there and be there. I want to go and meet people and get to know the tribe. Here's how you find the tribe. You join my forum. And I don't know any other way to do it except to join my forum. The forum is the method of communication. Now normally, on a normal year, I would be there and the tribe would kind of build around me. And I, I, I hope that doesn't sound egotistical. That's just the way it works. I mean, facts are facts. Uh, people know I'm there. They, they know they're safe. They know they're welcome and they'll be accepted. And so I go there to Ehrenberg or to Quartzsite and people fill in around me. There'll be usually three, 30, 40 people around me. So that would normally be the way you would go. I'm not going to be there, so that's not going to happen. So my suggestion is that you go to Ehrenberg in November, right now, and then uh, and go to the location where I usually camp, and there should be people there. Should be a lot of people there. That's if you don't want to get on the forum. Now, the best thing to do is get on the forum, because on the forum, there will always be a thread going, I just got to Quartz to Ehrenberg or Quartzsite. Who's here? I'd like to beat you. And then a bunch of people will respond and say, I'm over here and I'm over there. That's the communication method between members of this tribe is my forum. Well, how do I get on your forum? If you go to the, to the YouTube channel page, my page, across the top is the picture of the Tetons and my van and the tent. And there's a live link to the forum. It says Cheap RV Living Forum. Click on that, you go to the forum. You have to give a number, you have to give a username and a password and join, and then you can post. You can read without joining, but you can't post without joining. So you want to join. And then you want to post and say, I'm here, I'd like to meet folks. Where are you all? And uh, Joe Blow will answer, hi, I'm here, I'd love to meet you too, and I'm over at, and he'll give you some kind of description of where he's at. So go to my camp and get on the forum and find out. If there's no one there, then get on the forum and find out. So that's the, that's the big thing. Those are the two main ways. Just go there and hope you run into someone. You probably will. But more likely, if you get on the forum, you will run into someone. They'll answer your questions. So that's my first answer to you. Join the forum. Another thing you want to do is uh, on the links below, I will have uh, maps to Ehrenberg and Quartzsite, and I'll have links to the videos of actually driving to Ehrenberg and Quartzsite. So it's not hard to find. There's maps and videos and blog posts about both. Go to those, and uh, I'll have live links in the description below. Go there, click the links. You can't, you can't help but find these places. I think I've made it. Anyone can get there safely and securely. Okay. Uh. So then the next question I get is, Bob, I, I pull in and there's all these people and I don't know who's in the tribe. And I, I'm kind of uh, embarrassed just to walk up and say, hey, here I am. Uh, don't you want to know me? And so for a lot of us, it's, it's a little bit awkward to, to, make, to break the ice. And, and let's, we're going back to kindergarten. Uh, it's just something in us that's kind of hard for a lot of us, especially us introverts, to just walk up to a total stranger's van, knock on the door and say, hi, here I am. Um, and yet, you know, that's kind of what you're going to have to do. Uh, you're just going to have to push through that fear, that fear of rejection and fear of embarrassment and take the chance. And it's a chance. Just like you, when you got in your van and you drove away uh, from your house to a complete weird group of people in the desert, that's a leap of faith and a chance. Well, you're going to have to do the exact same thing when you get there. You're going to have to get out of your van and go up and knock on a door. It's just that simple. And say, hi, I'm looking for Bob. That's a good way to start. I'm looking for Bob. I watch his videos and I'm wondering if he's around. Even if you know I'm not around, that's a good icebreaker. Uh, because it gives you a connection. Now you know instantly, oh, he's, he opens the door. You're not some weirdo knocking on his door. You're another of the tribe. Oh, well, great. Good to meet you. Come around. Let me show you people. Let me meet you, introduce you to people. Or, just as likely, he's as been as scared as you are and hasn't met anyone yet, and he is delighted, or she, 
to meet another tribe member. Finally, a tribe member said hi to them. And I see this happen all the time. You know, we'll park in a little group. There'll be 40 people around me and none of them will ever get to know each other. Uh, one of the things I do when I'm there is I have pizza parties. I just go down to Little Caesars and, and buy 10 or 20 pizzas. It's not all that much money. And we have a pizza party and everyone comes and meets and they know each other then and they meet each other and they start talking and they know each other's face. And it's hard to break the ice. I know it is. I'm not... I'm not making fun of you at all. I know how hard it is to break the ice and how embarrassing it can be. So I try to do everything I can to get help people get over that. And that's one of the ways I do it. I won't be there this year to do it. This will be the first year when there won't have been any pizza parties. But so the odds are really good. They're going to be just as glad that you were brave enough and bold enough to knock on their door because they probably just weren't brave enough to go knock on their neighbor's door. And now that you're there, they're really glad. And the two of you together, hopefully, can be bold together and go and knock on even that further away's neighbor door. And now there's three of you. And now the three of you can go and do something. And people will see that you three are connected and maybe they'll be braver and they will come and join. And you will, before you know it, this little circle of friends will have grown and expanded. Uh, it's a lot easier at the RTR because we're all there for one reason and so it's you're packed in pretty tight in a small area and so you get to meet people pretty easy. At Ehrenberg and Quartzsite it may not be so or that early on in November in particular when there really aren't all that many of us in a really big area. So come join us. That's the bottom line to everything I've said. There's plenty of room at the RTR. There's plenty of room on BLM land. You are welcome and invited. This is a whole new life. You can make it anything you want it to be. You can become the person you've always wanted to become. Your life can be whatever you want. I, I just encourage each of you to start thinking that way. A whole new life. Starting over at scratch. I'm going to make it so good. And I'm going to look back at what I did wrong. I'm not going to do those things again. I'm going to have an amazing and wonderful life. And if you can do that, if you can come in with that new attitude, that new freshness, and, uh, and just apply all these principles that I've given you, then I think you're just going to have a wonderful, wonderful time at the RTR, make plenty of new friends, and honestly, with my whole heart, I believe you'll have the best times of your life waiting for you now. I really believe that. So, uh, come join us. And I myself will be there not until um, very late December. After I will leave my mom's after Christmas. I want to be there through Christmas. I'll be in Quartzsite. I'll be in uh, Ehrenberg uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, January. I'll stay there until the R just before the RTR, then I'll go to the RTR. You're welcome to seek me out and find me. Okay. Uh, if you got anything from this, and if you aren't too terribly offended by all that I've said, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.